scholar and activist at the New School, a university in New York City, founding director of the Platform Co-op Consortium that represent cooperative digital platforms worldwide. Dr. Scholz is a fellow at Open Society Foundation, the USC Bergen Institute, and the Berkman Klein Center at Harvard University. In 2014, he developed the Platform Co-op model that allows for the democratization of digital platforms. And this is not only his dream, but the reality with hundreds of businesses worldwide. He is our special guest today. Hello, Trevor. Hi, Ivan. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Trebor, for being with us. Uh, Trebor, do you believe that a new economy will rise from the crisis or are we going to go back to business as usual? And what role can platform co-ops play to support the economic recovery? So Yvonne, when we met last uh, time in November uh, in New York at our conference, uh, it was really a different world, right? Uh, you will remember. And uh, so I think now... Um, over the last uh, few weeks, really, right, it has really been weeks, uh, seven, eight, nine weeks, right? Um, suddenly you have so many undocumented people working in construction and uh, in restaurants and also freelancers working in the arts, uh, all losing their jobs, right? And I think so this is really the time to passionately uh, make demands and uh, not allow uh, uh, you know, the, this narrative of basically going back to normal, right? As much as we uh, have this sort of intuitive drive to wanting it to be the same, right? Uh, to instead basically ask uh, for uh, like a new life, right? A better life. And I think this is a good moment because also the extractive sharing economy is uh, shrinking. So you have Airbnb uh, laying off 25% of its staff. Uh, in March and April, Uber virtually collapsed, um, also laying off many of its people. And we see over the last uh, decade or so that cosmetic changes, right, so appealing to uh, CEOs, right, appealing to uh, holding up labor standards and saying, you know, this is uh, what you should follow, even appealing to the public hasn't really worked for many, uh, um, you know, labor organizers in the United States, at least. And uh, so you're asking also about, uh, you know, big tech. And I think we are moving really in this, uh, I think we're sort of at an outset of an epidemic, of a pandemic, right? This is not over. And I think the process, what we are seeing here is that the big tech companies are, are merging even further and will consolidate their power even further, right? We are talking here over Skype. Uh, I just came out of a Zoom call and, this is not only a consolidation that will leave many smaller startups uh, to the side, but it will also naturalize this much more, right? So it will naturalize uh, our um, our use of these technologies and our use of these uh, uh, um, infrastructures. So it's really important to push against that and to diversify the digital uh, economy. That's, I think, one thing. And then, and then secondly, uh, I think we will experience a surge in exploitation, right, uh, with uh, like really conditions that equal modern day slavery. We have this already, uh, and I'm not using these terms lightly. I think really it will be modern day slavery. You see this already with, let's say, uh, day laborers coming uh, with uh, domestic workers coming from the Philippines to North America, for example, uh, that really live in, in, in conditions that can be compared to modern day slavery. And I think we will see much, much more of that. So we also see that now small restaurants and bars and local shops uh, close permanently and that their staff is shifting to digital platforms. Right. So Amazon uh, just announced that they will uh, facilitate this process and make that easier. So these are all things to be concerned about. And I think this is why it's so important to coordinate right, and organize alternatives uh, right now. I mean, this is really a cooperative moment. right? I mean, if you look at the history of cooperatives back to 1844 and before that, I mean, this is exactly the kinds of moments when cooperatives emerged, right, um, in these extreme hardships for people to, you know, band together and create a better life for themselves. 
So I think uh, when we talk about like really creating genuine power for workers, like worker power, I think ownership really has to be part of the discussion or should be part of the discussion because ownership comes with genuine power, right? Combined, especially when it's in a positive regulatory environment. So we see this, you know, in, in Europe, uh, in, in, in some areas, we see this in Kerala and in India um, and, um, in other parts of the world where progressive municipalities in particular uh, support this model, right? So some, I think Belgium is also has some good examples where the municipalities supported the platform co-op model. So I think worker co-op models and especially worker co-ops, right, uh, can be really powerful in this moment, especially when they scale up and uh, there is always this prejudice against worker co-ops that they are very idealistic and wonderful for, for the workers, but that they don't scale, right? Uh, and it's certainly true in the United States, you know, but if you look at, uh, you know, of course, Mondragon in the Basque country is obviously an example with 81,000 workers, uh, but then there's also um, uh, Uralungal labor contract uh, cooperative society in India, which uh, has a tremendous size, one of the biggest construction companies in India um, that has existed for 90 years, has stayed democratic in its governance and uh, has really managed uh, to invest in the cooperative and not demutualize. So all these things that people always bring up against worker cooperatives, uh, traditional economists bring up against uh, worker cooperatives, you know, they are clear examples that prove them wrong. And I think the internet can really help to scale uh, this model. So that's why I think it's really a moment for <clears throat> platform uh, co-ops to uh, worldwide uh, to, to scale and become powerful, especially I would start, of course, in, in progressive municipalities. And uh, this is also part of uh, an uh, you know, out of this uh, sentiment comes also a project uh, that my institute just launched, launched with Mondragon Corporation, which is a, a course that really helps, uh, an online course that teaches people about, um, that teaches people about this, uh, mo this, this concept and this uh, business model, and uh, then incubates it uh, with partners in the local countries. Uh, so, uh, you know, this morning I was just uh, in a call with a group in Italy that will support the incubation locally with uh, with cooperatives uh, there. And uh, so that's, uh, yeah, so I think it's a really important moment and one where uh, we just need to be really clear and, and drop all our sentiments of uh, being separate and really realize that we are together, you know, that smart and let's say our institute and all these other people in the ecosystem that we really band together and coordinate together to uh, change the situation and help uh, these this unprecedented number of unemployed people that will uh, that uh, will you know have a very hard time over the next um, few months and years. Thank you, uh, Trebor, for those uh, explanation and share of thought and views. Um, I hope you will be uh, safe and please uh, uh, give us some news uh, when, you, uh, when you can. Okay, thank you so much, Ivan. Thank you for your collaboration.